131, let's take a look at example two. I want to graph the function two to the x, and I'm asking you for a few traits, like domain, range, and end behavior. So one thing I want to just take note is that my base is larger than one. So just right out the gate, I know I have exponential growth. Which means my basic function is going to start really close to the x-axis and scooch up. That, I know that's the general shape of my graph. And again, that's something we want you to know coming out of Math 31, that if you saw this equation, you could say, okay, it's exponential, base is greater than one, it's exponential growth. There's, if I air draw it, it's gonna look something like that. All right, so let's, let's start with domain. Domain, do I have a fraction? No. Do I have a radical? No. Do I have a logarithm? No. And I, I say those things because we've been talking the entire semester about our three domain issues, right? Our three domain issues that we take a look at in here, we have to worry about fractions, radicals, and logarithms. And those are the times that I have to throw pieces of my number line, my x-axis, out of the domain. But I don't have any of those, so I get to keep my entire x-axis. It's going to be negative infinity to infinity. All right, now in terms of putting ordered pairs here, I could make my little t table like I did in the last example, right? When I say t table, it's kind of like, this looks like a very extended letter t. And I could pick a bunch of numbers if I wanted to, and then see what the corresponding y values are. But we have technology, so let's start using our calculator to help us be more efficient in these problems. So I'm going to go over, turn this on. The last thing we graphed was the 1 half to the x problem in example 1. Let me clear that out and do 2 to the x. And then I'm going to use my table function. Ooh, and I'm up at 15. That is, those are really large numbers. Let me scroll back down. And I'll go to my standard 5. So it looks like negative 2 is 0.25. So we've got 1 fourth, 1 half, one, two, four, eight. So let me go ahead and draw those in. So we've got negative two, one fourth, negative one, one half. We've got zero, one, and we go up to two, four, and then when I plug three in, I go to eight. All right, so I can see some ordered pairs hanging out there. Let me go ahead and hit zoom six. And I think the graph's going to look like this, and there it is. So let me go ahead and draw that in. Okay. And I can see that horizontal asymptote there, so I'm actually going to go draw that, and then we'll just have a quick chat about the end behavior. So there's my horizontal asymptote y equals zero. Now, I only have that horizontal asymptote on the left side of my graph. So I do want to denote that. So for n behavior, let me erase this just for a bit. All right, so for n behavior, on the left side, right, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero. This is on the left. And then on the right, I have an up arrow. And I typically write my end behaviors for exponential functions. I go left to right. Um, just I like to go left to right when I'm thinking about things. Um, now, I do want to just have a quick chat about this end behavior. Why do we get 0 on the left and infinity on the right? So let's look at our function. And for end behavior, we always talk about as x heads to negative infinity. What is our y values doing? And as x heads to positive infinity, what are our y values doing? So I'm going to put question marks right here. And I just want to give you, again, some gut feelings behind this. Why am I getting zero here and infinity here? Okay, so think of x becoming a really, really large negative number. And for right now, I'm going to just use something like negative 100. All right? So I want us to think about what f of negative 100 would be. That would be like saying 2 to the negative 100, which would, like, which would be equivalent to saying 1 over 2 to the 100. And I want you to think of 2 to the 100 and how large of a number that is. Imagine doing 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 
and that's just in your denominator, right? So I want you to think about two to the 100. I'm not even sure if my calculator can handle that. It's such a large number. Oh, it can, okay. So two to the 100 is 1.26 with 30 zeros after it. It's huge. Well, imagine you did one divided by that answer. Right? What would that fraction be equal to if you had one on your numerator and a super large number on your denominator? Do you see how it's basically equivalent to zero? Because this has got a negative exponent here, so this is the number point 0000000 with 30, 30 zeros and then the number eight. It's basically equal to zero. So this is pretty much zero, which is why we're getting that horizontal asymptote of y equaling zero on the left side. Now on the flip of that, let's think about x going to positive infinity and let's do f of 100. Well, that would be two to the 100, and we just did two to the 100. It's a gigantic number, right? It's basically infinity. All right, so I'll put it as approximately infinity because if we keep multiplying powers of two, our numbers get larger and larger and larger, and that's why we're heading up on the right side of that equation. All right, now you don't have to go through all of this each time. You can just tell me, hey, my horizontal asymptote is on the left. I've got my right arrow, I mean my arrow heading up on the right. That's great, but I just wanted us to get some gut feelings around that. All right, for the range, if I look at my graph, I gotta go down to up. I do see I have the up arrow, so I'm going up forever, but I'm not down forever. I've got no graph here, but I finally pick up some graph this way, and you can see it starts at y equaling zero, but I never actually hit zero. So my range is going to be zero, and then all the way up to positive infinity. Okay, so with that, we've done our basic exponential decay. Now we've got our exponential growth. Let's start shifting and stretching all of these functions. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.